Get me that signal. We need more power. Well, hello there, little elf. What is your name? My name is Miley, and you are the great wizard Gandalf. My father says you're older than even the oldest elf, even older than the trees themselves. Well, not quite that old. Hmm, it seems my pipe has gone out. My mother says that smoking is bad for you and, and it'll stunt your growth. Your mother is a very wise elf. I'll tell you what. I'll just pretend to smoke until you go to bed. Thank you. My mother said I could ask you for a story. Oh, she did, did she? Well, I suppose I'd better tell you a story then. Would you like to hear about Bill the Pony? No, I want to hear about the Battle of the Five Armies. Wouldn't you rather hear a funny story? I know one about a tinker and a pig. No, thank you. I want to hear some action. <sighs> All right, then. The dwarves had sealed themselves up in the Lonely Mountain, while the wood elves and the men of the lake laid siege on their fortress. I left this foolishness behind to find out what the real enemy was doing. My father said the dwarves were mean and they didn't know how to share and they smelled bad. <laughs> Who's telling this story, little one? You or I? The outcome of the battle could have been very different. Let me tell you about what could have happened if the free peoples had not joined together to drive back the Shadow's Horde. Here we have a game of Battle of the Five Armies, all set up and ready to go. Since the setup is the same every game, then you'll get to know it pretty intimately. Your free peoples are kind of scattered around. There's not a lot of them. You see a whole horde of the Shadow up there in the corner just waiting to sweep in. The object of the game for the free peoples is to survive. Uh, if they can manage to hold on to enough settlements and land, then the game will eventually end in a victory for the free peoples. There's this fate track at the bottom of the board. It goes up to 15. If the fate marker ever reaches 15, the free people automatically win the game. Also, if they manage to kill off the only character that the shadow has, that is Bolg, then they automatically win the game. And if Bjorn comes into the game and the Shadow doesn't have at least six victory points, then the Free People automatically win then too. Now, victory points are determined. There are two types of cities or areas, settlements on the board. There's these ones that just have the blue box, and these are settlements. They are worth two victory points. And then there's the ones that have a blue box with a beige triangle underneath it, and these are fortifications. Those are uh, like cities or forts or whatever, so those are worth four points each. And what the shadow person has to do to win is to end any turn with at least ten victory points, so they'd have to control enough to have ten victory points at the end of a turn. Or if at any time they control the front gate and have 10 victory points, they win immediately. The game just ends because they won. It's ours. Really comes up with some interesting stuff in that. You've got your uh, blue is, of course, the free people. Red is, of course, the shadow. The major driving part of this game is this fate track here at the bottom. Uh, different characters for the Free peoples will come into play as this little fate marker moves along the track. So when you get to two, you're going to get Bilbo here. When you get to six, you're going to be able to take Thorin out. When you get to eight is when the, the Lord of the Eagles comes out, and then things really start going in the favor of the free peoples. By the time Bjorn comes out, 
the Shadow is in big trouble unless they get really, really lucky. The starting figures, those are all on the board, plus they have these little recruitment tokens in different areas. Now, each player will be able to put out more recruitment tokens by using their action dice, and if you notice, these are the same type of action dice that come with Lord of the uh, War of the Ring. Luckily, there is a uh, player's aid which tells you everything you need to know about what the different symbols are for each player on the action dice and what actions you can do. On the back is the full description of your game's turn and how to do combat. So 90% of the stuff you need is on here. Another 8% of the stuff you need is in the pretty large rule book. And the last 2% you may have to go look up if you're really nitpicky. I was able to figure most of it out. You even have art to look. Here's a little archery thing. So you can shoot archers, and this is a range. And on the other side, Gandalf can blow people up too with his special Gandalf bass. Which you measure across the board. What you're going to be doing, the main goal for the free people, is to defend, 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 build up their forces, keep the shadow out. The shadow up there in the corner has got to move in here, start taking over settlements. You've got these two other boxes here. Now those are the goblins, and they are stuck where they're at because there's these little things on the board and keeps them stuck until there's at least five goblins in one box. And once there's five in there, then you pull that thing off and the goblins can move out of there. So you can have these goblin armies start coming in from the opposite side of the board. These dice here are all used for combat. Their combat system is pretty cool. It's got a lot in it, and I, I think it's genius the way that, that they did it. It's, it takes into account some terrain uh, modifications. It takes into account uh, superiority for certain troops in certain types of terrain. It's got a whole sequence that you play through. It's it's very cool. Each player has their own deck of cards that they will be able to use. You can have up to six cards in your hand uh, max. There's also a combined deck that the players get to use. Uh, they both draw from. But the main driving force is fate. And you've got the fate track, you've got fate cards, which always help the free peoples. And that is one of the first things that happen at the beginning of your turn. What you'll do is the free peoples will decide if they're going to activate some of their generals. Because, yes, you've already got some characters on the board. Gandalf, uh, the Bard, Dane, and Thranduil. Thranduil? are already on the board, and there's stuff that they can do, mostly to help with recruiting initially. So you got to make a choice as the free people how many of these guys you want to activate. And you get up to three of these tokens, and you can activate up to three of their cards by placing it on the token. And then during your turn, you'll be able to take that little activation off and do whatever special action they have. However, if for each one of those that you use, there's this cup. And no, it's not a Hello Kitty cup. It's just the one I'm using. And you put these fate tokens in, similar to what uh, happens in War of the Ring. And the shadow gets to pull out one token for each one of yours that you placed, your little activation tokens that you placed. And he gets to keep the last one. So if he pulls out on his first pull a three, well, see, what that would mean is that this marker would move one, two, three spots on that fate track. And that's the maximum. He doesn't want to do that, so... All right, he's going to skip that and take his chances. Since you used all three of your, your uh, general markers, he gets three chances. With his second one, he pulls out a one. So he says, all right, I'm going to take the one. So he takes that one, puts the three back. The little fate marker goes up one. And now for this turn, he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Then the players place their other figures, uh, like their leadership tokens, which will give them, uh, let them do leadership re-rolls. It's all very interesting, and it is a lot of fun. There is a lot involved in it. There is tons of strategy, and there's a lot of luck, because you're rolling to see who is going to win certain combats, and whenever there's a big combat, you know that there is going to be luck involved. 
I've, I've lost due to luck. I've lost due to screwing up my strategy. Like one mistake, like accidentally attacking without having the superiority and not realizing it. You know, if I had attacked from this area instead of this area, I would have had the tactical advantage. I would have gotten that extra card, and that extra card would have enabled me to win that battle. But no, I wasn't thinking ahead, and I ended up, the free people got the extra card, and their card helped them win their battle, and I got, you know, stomped. Battle of the Five Armies, it's a brief overview. I've got an, I'll have another video that gives you a full explanation of, like, a turn, so you can see how it's played. But there you go, that's how you play Battle of the Five Armies. Battle of the Five Armies from Ares Games takes the slice of an overall story, the final battle scene from The Hobbit, and represents it in board game form. The mechanics are based on the War of the Ring, but this is a much smaller scale and just a single battle, so the game is, theoretically, faster to play and more focused in its scope. In reality, the length of play depends upon factors like the experience of both players and the length of the battles that you actually fight. Do you run away quicker, or do you fight to the bitter end? For the free people's player, your game is straightforward. You just need to survive until the big guns come out. Remember, each turn you survive will bring you closer to Space 15 on the Fate Track and the automatic win. You need to play defensively, but you also need to know when to strike. Do you fortify the ford leading into the valley, or do you pull those two archers back into the dale and fortify there? If you're the shadow player, do you move straight for dale, or do you smash the eastern spur, taking some heavy casualties in the process? The game is a challenge every time I play it, regardless of whether I'm playing the free peoples or the shadow. I've won as both, although I've had a much harder time as the Shadow. This game is best played with others who have played the game before. If you're a noob, then by all means play with anyone so that you can learn. Maybe play the Free Peoples first, because mistakes will cost you less as them than as the Shadow. If you haven't gotten the hint yet, this is an awesome game. They developed the combat system to have enough complexity to be interesting, but easy enough to learn the nuances in a few minutes. Pay attention to terrain superiority factors because every little bit helps. The biggest decisions for the free player involve how much fate tokens to use each turn. You can really hamper the shadow player, but also hamper your own development by only using one per turn for the first few turns. It's still up to the luck of the draw though, but the odds would be a bit more in your favor. The damage factor can creep up on your army without realizing it. It takes a turn or two for you to accumulate enough damage for your army to be actually hurt. But once it happens, the army is a house of cards and it crumbles quickly. The characters are way more useful than you would immediately think. Make use of them where you can. It is possible to finish a game in under two hours, but to me, most seem to last about two to three hours. My only complaints? I wish the elves were green rather than blue. Oh, to make it more obvious which is which. There should be different tokens for fortification damage so that I don't actually try to remove the fortification damage when I'm removing army damage. And the triangles themselves are a bit cumbersome. They work. This is the perfect combination of strategy and luck in the game. Yes, it's got a wonderful combination of both. Although, to me, it seems to be a bit more forgiving towards the Free People's player. Who would enjoy this game? Well, fans of the books, definitely, and of the movies, in most cases. This is a thinker game, not a party game, so plan your opponent accordingly. This would make a great husband and wife or life partner game, or if you have a go-to buddy for strategy games, then do yourself a favor and bring this along. I actually wish there was an online version of this game so that I could practice different strategies against a computer uh, and then challenge real people across the globe. It's not a game for young kids or party gamers. For the rest of us, this game is a gem. Thank you for joining me in this review of the Battle of the Five Armies from Ares Games. Let me know if you found this review helpful by leaving a comment or sending me an email at elliot underscore miller at voicebe.com. 
There's a subscribe button over here. Please subscribe to the Voice of E channel on YouTube. Please. It's right. Oh, it's over there. Oh, over. It's around you somewhere. Just click that subscribe button because I will have plenty of gaming, entertainment, comic book coverage this year, and it should be a lot of fun and lots more board game reviews. Thanks again. And until next time, keep your mind free. It needs that signature. We need more power.